we have an interesting problem here. In this case, the stress rectangular stress components are given to us, but they are not complete. In fact, we need to find one of the uh, component that is sigma x here. It is given as t11, and we need to determine that t11. And then the things which are given to us is they are saying that one of the plane passing through this point has a resultant stress as zero on that plane. That means the resultant stress that we will be having on this plane is zero. Now the one way to say that this resultant stress can be zero is if the traction vectors in say x direction and in y direction and in z direction all these are zero. Okay, so what we'll do is also we need to determine the direction cosines of the normal to that plane. That also we'll find out, no issues. So first of all, what we'll do, we'll try to write down all the things, all these values that are given to us. Okay, sigma x is something which you need to find out. So I'll write it as sigma x as t11. It is also given to us that sigma y is equal to sigma z is equal to zero here, right? This value as well as this value is uh, zero. Then we have this tau xy as 2 given to us, tau xy is given to us as 2. Uh, we also have tau xz as 1, this value or this value, it is given as 1. And then finally tau yz is given to us as 2. Okay, so and then we need to determine, also determine the direction cosines that is nx, uh, we need to determine ny and we need to determine nz. Right, or you you might be even uh, writing this direction cosines as L, M, N, N. Okay, doesn't matter. So since we have this information with us, all this information, the 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 equation that should come to our mind is uh, nothing but it is Cauchy stress equation, right? So what do we know about Cauchy stress equation? It says that the traction vector in x direction can be written as sigma x n x plus tau xy ny plus tau xz nz. Yes, then we also know the traction vector in y direction will be nothing but tau xy nx plus sigma y ny and then we have this tau yz nz. And then finally the traction vector in z direction we know we can write it as tau xz nx plus tau yz ny plus sigma z nz. We know all this, right? But then in this case, the sigma x is something which we need to find that is nothing but t11. I'll write it as nx plus we have this tau xy as 2. So this will be 2 times ny and then tau xz is given as 1. So this will become 1 times nz and then this we know it should be 0 right from here we know that since the resultant stresses on that plane is 0 that means each of these uh, traction vectors should be 0. Similarly here now this tau xy as we know it is again 2 so this will be 2 times nx sigma y is 0 here right plus 0 I need not write this ny again because I know it is 0 uh, plus tau yz is given as 2 so I'll write this as 2 times nz and then finally this should be also equal to 0 and then we have this tau xz again which is nothing but 1 times nx tau yz is uh, we know tau yz is 2 so I'll write this as 2 times ny plus this sigma z is 0 so I'll write this as 0 and this should be equal to 0 okay so what has happened here is we have now these three equations with us equation 1 equation 2 equation 3 probably what I can do is I can rewrite this equation as follows okay so then let us neatly write down these equations now we have t11 nx plus 2 times ny plus nz equal to 0, right? This first equation. Then the second equation tells us that 2 nx, 2 times nx should be equal to minus 2 times nz. So basically what it is telling us is nz is minus nx, right? If I take this 
on the other side if i cancel out 2 2 i will get this nz as minus times nx and then from this equation what do i get is i get this ny i get this ny as minus 1 by 2 times nx so basically what I, what i'm doing here is i'm writing this uh, nz and ny in terms of nx okay but the problem here is we have now four unknowns that is t11 is unknown for us as well as this nx ny nz are unknowns right so we have four unknowns but we have three equations so how do we proceed from here on thankfully we know one more equation of direction cosine that the sum of the square of direction cosine is always equal to 1 and this equation will come to our rescue here at this stage okay otherwise we would have not been able to proceed okay so we know hopefully, thankfully we know this equation that is the sum of the squares of the direction cosine is always equal to 1 so what i will do here i'll keep this nx as it is okay but in place of ny i know that it is half of nx square so i'll what i will i will substitute this as minus half of nx the whole square because i know ny is half of nx similarly nz i know it is minus nx this should be equal to zero now from here there is only one unknown that is nx okay so if i try to solve this now this will be two times nx square plus uh, one by four times nx square two times nx square one is here and one is here plus this will become square so this will become 1 by 4 times nx square is equal to 1 so from here this is if, if i divide and multiply here by 4 what i will get is uh, this will be 8 by 4 and this is 1 so this totally this will become 9 by 4 9 i'll, I'll probably write it here 9 by 4 nx square is equal to 1 so this will finally give me nx as how much it will give me it will give me plus or minus 2 by 3 all right so i have got this nx as plus or minus 2 by 3 now since this is plus or minus uh, 2 by 3 therefore what will be nz nz will be uh, minus or plus 2 by 3 right because uh, nx nz is nothing but minus of nx so when nx will be positive 2 by 3 uh, nz will be minus 2 by 3 and when nx is minus 2 by 3 uh, nz should be plus 2 by 3 all right and then here this ny i will get now if i substitute this plus 2 by 3 here i will get it as minus 1 by 3 so uh, ny what i should get minus or plus 1 by 3 why i'm basically writing this as minus or plus minus or plus just to make sure that when nx is positive value nz and ny will be negative when nx is negative nz and ny will be positive because uh, we know that nz is minus nx ny is minus half of nx so at this stage what we have done we have we have been able to find now what are the values of nx ny and nz so what we can do is we can straight away substitute these values of nx ny nz in this equation now all right so this equation i'll rewrite here again with the values of nx and y and z we have here t11 and the value of nx i'm taking it as positive 2 by 3 since i'm taking the value of nx as positive i will have to take the value of n and y as negative 1 by 3 so i will write this as minus 1 by 3 and then value of nz as again since i have taken this as positive i'll have to take this as negative 2 by 3 all right and this should be equal to 0 so i'll have to work out now i'll have to do some arithmetic operations so this will be 2 by 3 t11 uh, this will become minus 2 by 3 and this will again this will become minus 2 by 3 this should be equal to 0 so therefore 2 by 3 t11 I will get this as how much? I'll get this as 4 by 3, right? This is this this is 2 by 3, this is also 2 by 3. So this will become minus 4 by 3. Once I take it on the other side, I'll get plus 4 by 3. So finally I get this T11 as 2. Okay. Since the units are not given, since no units are given, I'll call this as T11 as 2 units. So this is what uh, we had to find here. Uh, we had to find uh, the direction cosines of uh, that is the value of nx, ny, nz. So this is my value of 
say nx this is my value of nz this is my value of ny and then the component sigma x which was t11 we have found it as t11 is two units so with the help of cauchy stress equation which are the cauchy stress equation this right with the help of cauchy stress equation and the property of direction cosine we can solve this type of problems